Hello, in this video, I want to continue some of the conversation that we were having before about Derrida and hauntology. This is a particularly interesting video to me because I think that how uh, people respond to and execute Derrida, I think, will be really important for the upcoming water resolution. And overall, I just think there are a lot of really key questions to consider about like how the types of questions that uh, the critique that people usually read from Derrida usually frames the debate and the way in which it kind of frames other ways that you should be, be debating like criticisms broadly. I think in this uh, particular video, I want to talk about how policy teams are responding to Derrida because I think that um, when they're responding to the specific claims about the way in which Derrida is framing things like time and the relationship that the past has to the present and the way that is kind of like executed through specters, etc., I think are really interesting places to talk about how policy teams can kind of frame their arguments because I think it's really a question of like what types of examples you're choosing and being precise about like what purpose those examples serve in relationship to kind of like coming into this debate that is something to really talk about the relationship between the past, the present, and the future, and then trying to use those examples to really accomplish something that I think really fights some of the thesis core value concerns because I think that against this criticism, one of the like holes that I kind of see uh, for it uh, and, and what will kind of drive some of our conversation for like the priorities against this type of argument is that I think that if you're able to really win a way of framing the relationship the past has to the present and future in a way that stops selling arguments from like being really persuasive and that frames like the the kind of like relevancy of ghosts is something that has a secondary concern to the affirmative then it's extremely hard I think for a lot of these uh, criticisms to really win uh, the type of offense that they want so hopefully you're kind of getting context to some of the stuff that I've talked about in the last videos and in the intro Derrida in order to get a better idea of like what are the concepts that I'll be using to kind of make the suggestions that I'm here and like why I think those suggestions kind of work in that way. I think that when you're just kind of figuring out like what are the base priorities you have against um the hauntology debate, I think first you need to have like a really strong frame of argument that really goes uh, deep into like what the relationship the past is is to the present and future and how that should frame the debate. Although obviously I think that your interpret your interpretation for the uh, way that you should be like framing the debate as a whole could stay the same and I'll talk about this a little bit more i do think that the kind of development that you do of your standards and the way that you talk about the development of like certain benefits to debate definitely should answer some of the key critical questions that are going to be asked in the thesis later on because i think that it's really the way in which you kind of jump out the gate and answer the framing and the thesis portion of the debate will really drive your ability to kind of be efficient or not efficient for the rest of the debate on other parts of the flow and so i think just being incredibly good at kind of like really having a solid plan on how you want to frame the debate and what central question you want it to be on and then making sure that you have the relevant examples for it is super important. Additionally, I think that when you're trying to set some other priorities for what this looks like, I think that really pushing away the ability for the negative to kind of like frame their criticism as incredibly skeptical or as incredibly critical of like the possibility of any like positive relationship to policy or the state. I think that a lot of times teams that are making arguments about Derrida um, and Hauntology find a lot of weakness in their ability to really articulate a hard kind of structural stance about the way in which you know, things like liberalism in the state are really operating in ways that make it like inevitably kind of like counterintuitive to use in the context of the alternative. And so I think there are ways that you can propose really interesting ways of talking about the interrelations between gifts and how they frame like policy proposals and their usage for like making particular demands, um, as well as their like usage as a way to criticize demands. And I think playing on that can really get you closer to some creative articulations of the permutation that I think uh, ultimately puts you in a much um, I think offensive and just strategic portion uh point in the debate. I think that generally when you're trying to think about how you should be uh, doing the framing portion of this debate, it's really important to think about like what are the ways in which you want how the judge is evaluating the affirmative and uh, the negative in relationship to each other or how they're evaluating the consequences of the AF in relationship to like those ability of those consequences to exist. I think that it's important that when you like if you're going to make this normative like policy interpretation for a framework that you have like arguments within that framing page that explicitly explain why that even if there is a historical context to like the explanation of the existence of certain impacts or like there are ghosts that haunt them that does not mean that those uh, like provide the solution or the immediate relief necessary in order to like resolve the violence that is being created by that historical context and like overvaluing the historical context can slow our ability to like respond to like urgent crises and i think in that sense you can really start framing maybe both the urgency of your impacts earlier on so that the judge kind of like has a reason why they're already kind of persuaded by the way in which you're be weighing your impacts throughout the debate but also because it kind of starts this early on debate and where you're really offensively answering the kind of like weight or the impact of the thesis of uh, level of the debate simply because you're able to articulate um the way in which the uh 
you're able to articulate like why the particular usage or the types of link arguments that the critique is really going to lean on doesn't mean like an all out rejection to the app. It kind of gets you out of that immediate you link you lose framework. It gets you out of like some of the like kind of cheesy impact frameworks that you'll kind of see later on that you really need in order to frame like some of the really important questions for the rest of this debate. I think that when you kind of like transfer how this looks into like what types of ways that you should kind of like frame the thesis qu uh, question for this debate, you really want to be able to think about ways that maybe you cannot win it like the past has no effect on the present or future because I think that that may be like a bit disingenuous and harder to win as a truth but I think that uh, it's a lot easier to win that even if you're right about there being inevitable context and historical nature to the existence of certain uh, violences and policies etc the idea is that those like overdetermine the possibility of the end result of those things is wrong I think that when you're trying to figure out what types of examples are like most relevant to this line of argumentation I think that really finding policies that in the same way of the AV make a change that's radically different to the way that law was happening before for, that there can be like changes in like the purpose and the usage of the law in ways that like shift like the overall like telos of how it operates or at least how it executes like certain things and I think it could be really interesting for you to talk about the like possible transformative of it in terms of like how those radical changes of demands were also uh contextual to the ways in which like ghost specters etc haunted the process for like how political demands are made and like changed them in order to make and create like better political demands as a whole and I think doing that not only allows you to contest the thesis in terms of like mitigating why the like par the portion of it is like so powerful in that way but it also allows you to kind of like lean into something that gets you a lot closer to a permutation uh, or earlier you're on because then the onus for you isn't being able to win that like all of your examples are correct or all of your examples override the ability of them to win that any specters are like relevant or irrelevant but rather a question of like how do we understand these things as like uh kind of like interplaying into each other and how they kind of create uh various types of like political uh frameworks on top of each other and why that opens us up to like more uh, like more avenues for ways that we kind of like demand political change instead of less and i think in that sense that like you can really make it hard for a team to win that like the criticism or the evidence that they're reading really suggests an all-out rejection of the possibility of that kind of like uh commensurate moment between the affirmative and the alternative method and in that sense I think that the team that's kind of reading the data critique is in a lot less uh, strategic position for like how they're able to really make the things that they want particularly pop in this sense and I think that you can make a lot of offense and make a lot of like really important interesting arguments by starting your thesis at, at a point where it doesn't really matter whether or not they win like any truth to their thesis but like how does that truth relate to like the overall framing of the relationship of like politics between the affirmative and the alternative and I think routing it that way kind of like complicates the question in a way that's much more helpful for you hopefully this video was helpful and hopefully you'll keep tuning into, tuning into the videos i'll be doing on derrida and hotology and the specters of marts because i really enjoy it and i think it will show up in the water topic because i think it's really uh definitely a part of a different literature basis that'll be super popular on the water topic and yeah hopefully you'll keep tuning in and enjoying thanks